Hello, welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, we would like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my Stories for Wonderful Children. Skyla woke up from her nap. She decided that she needed to talk to Theophilus, so she went and talked to him. She talked. She and, asked him. And she like found the princess. Do I get to eat whatever I want? And the butterfly said yes. He's like, okay. Do I get to sleep in a royal bed? Yes. Then do I get to call you Theo? No. Yeah. Because the butterfly's name is Theophilus. So she asked Theophilus, she said, so, um, can I do magic, Theophilus? Theophilus said, no, not as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm not really sure. Maybe you can do a kind of magic that I don't know about. But I can do butterfly magic, and I can tell when another butterfly can do butterfly magic. And I can't tell that you can do magic. Well, I don't think I can do magic either, said Skyla. I've never been able to do magic in the past. She said, so this moth lord can do magic? Oh, yes, said Theophilus. He does moth magic, it's, and he's very powerful, the most powerful of all the moth magicians. So, how am I supposed to stop him, said Skyla. I don't know, said Theophilus. I'm sort of glad I'm not you, because I don't know. All right, said Skyla. Well, let's see. Tell me about where the moth lord rules. Well, said Theophilus, there's a patch of Lepidoptera that's nighttime, and the patch moves from one area to another, and wherever it's nighttime, that's where the moths are, and the butterflies stay in the, the light portion, and the moths are perfectly nice, but the moth lord has gotten greedy and decided that because he rules everywhere that it's night, he wants to rule all of the world, and so he's trying to make it night everywhere. Huh. Isn't that interesting, said Skyla. What are you thinking about, said Theophilus. I have an idea, said Skyla. Let's go talk to the Moth Lord. Talk, said Theophilus. You want to talk to him? Oh, well, yes, said Skyla. Am I a great warrior, Theophilus? Not as far as I know, said Theophilus. Am I a great magician, Theophilus? Not as far as I can tell, said Theophilus. So I don't really have many other choices other than talking, do I? Theophilus said, no. Skyla said, besides, even if I'm not a magician and I'm not a warrior, I am one thing. I'm a biologist who knows a lot about animals and butterflies, and I know a few things that I think perhaps the Moth Lord has not thought of. All right, said Theophilus, I'll show you where the current patch of nighttime is. So he and Skyla walked out of the castle, and Skyla followed him across some hill, and she could see up ahead an area where it was dark, and they began to walk into it, and not long after they had walked in, they were stopped by a moth that had glowing spots on its wings, a big brown moth, and he said, who goes there? And Theophilus said, it is I, Theophilus, with the princess Skyla. She is not a princess here. Here only the moth lord rules. Yes, said Skyla. We know. I was very much hoping to talk to the Moth Lord. Does he have a moment? You will not stop him from casting his spell and ruling, you know. Yes, said Skyla. I know that. You, you know that? Yes, said Skyla. I'm quite sure that I won't stop him. I'm confused. Yes, she said. Well, maybe you'd better take me to talk to him. So the Moth said, this way. So she followed him and Theophilus followed him, and they walked for some time. Skyla, like, looking up, she could see the stars, and the moon was out, and she could sometimes see a moth flying from one spot to another, sipping nectar from a flower. Or nectar? Nectar, yes. That's what butterflies and moths eat. Were there a bunch of flowers growing all around both parts? Yeah, because, I mean, it's all the same land, it's just some, it's just the dark, sometimes areas of it are dark, and where it's dark, the, the, that's where the moth lord lives, oh, and the moths. Oh, so, 
She followed him, and after she had walked on for a little while, she came to a tree. And hanging from the tree was a giant cocoon, and the cocoon was glowing slightly, and she could see four big moths hanging onto the side of the cocoon, and they were glowing too, and they seemed to be humming and chanting a strange noise, noise that sort of gave Skylar the creeps and gave her shivers down her back. What was it? She knew that this chant of theirs must be some form of powerful moth magic. Hello, she said. The biggest moth she had ever seen in her life came flying out of the cocoon. He was about as big as a dinner plate, a very large dinner plate. Whoa! Yeah. And he That's said, he said, ha! So we meet at last, Princess Skyla. You will not stop me. You are too late. Oh no! I'm not going to stop you," said Skyla. "But I, I don't think you're going to turn all of." Lepidoptera tonight. What do you mean? I've checked this spell and been casting it for years. I know what I'm doing. It will turn it tonight. Oh, I believe you," said Scott. "I don't know much about magic, but I believe you that you're very powerful, and that you know what you're doing, and that if you finish casting your spell, that you will turn all of Lepidoptera tonight. No, what I'm here to talk to you about is that you don't want to do that. What are you talking about? Of course, I want to do that. No, I, I really don't think you do. I don't think you know what you're talking about. I think I should have my moths expel you. Well, you can if you want," said Skyla. "But before you do that, may I ask you a question? That's all I ask is three questions. Three questions, and then you will leave me alone so that I may finish establishing my dominion over Lepidoptera. Oh yes, if you answer my three questions, then after that I will leave you alone and. If you choose, you may finish your spell, and I will not even attempt to stop you. Fine," said the Moth Lord. "Ask away." Skyla looked at him. She said, "What do moths eat?" The Moth Lord said, "What do you mean? What do moths eat? We eat nectar from flowers, of course." I didn't. I hear you were a biologist or something. I thought you were supposed to know things like this. Yes, I'm just checking," said Skyla. I wanted to make sure moths here ate the same thing as moths where I grew up. Now. Let me ask you this: What makes nectar? You really aren't a biologist. You're not very bright either. Can you just answer the question? <sighs> Fine. Flowers on plants make nectar. Thank you," said Skyla. "Thank you so much for being so patient with my questions. Now I have only one more question: What do plants need to grow? What do plants need to grow? Why plants? Plants need water. And soil, and oh, sunlight. Right," said Skyla. So, then, I'm not going to ask any more questions. But I think I'm correct in figuring that if you finish casting your spell, then it will be dark forever in all of Lepidoptera, and no more plants will grow, and no more flowers will be grown. And there'll be no nectar, and you, and all the moths, and all the butterflies, will starve. Right? Oh," said the moth lord. "I guess I hadn't thought of that." He turned around. "Stop the spell! Stop! Stop! Stop the spell!" "Yes," said Skyla. "Well, I'm so glad we could have this chat. I do hope that maybe you can come visit me some day in the palace, and maybe I'd like to come back and visit you." The Nighttime here in the Pedopter is simply lovely. Yes. Well, I think you've given me some things to think about. I imagine so," said Skyla. "Come on, Theophilus." And she turned and walked away with Theophilus close behind her. As soon as they got into the light, Theophilus landed on Skyla's shoulder. He said, "That was amazing." Well, I'm glad you're impressed, Theophilus. Call me Theo," he said. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com, and you can also find us on most social media. I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell.
tell someone you love a story. Mm-hmm.